Hello again, St. John's family and friends. This is Pastor Brady, and this is our midweek devotion and prayer time together for Wednesday, March 17th, 2021. Well, as I come to you today, we are, of course, celebrating on the 17th of March, St. Patrick's Day. And that's going to be the theme of our devotion and prayer time together. You know, St. Patrick, the idea of the man and, and what he did is really an example for all Christians. Now, we know there's been many legends and fables and, and tales told about St. Patrick throughout the generations, but there is truth to who he was as well. And if we just focus on the idea of what he did and his boldness of faith, he's an example for us of the kind of disciples, the kind of apostles the kind of children God wants us to be. Children with purpose that go forth taking the message of Jesus Christ, no matter what they may face, no matter what there may be out there to try to stop them, they go forth and take that message. And that's what we're called to do. We're called to get that message of hope, that message of love, that message of that free gift of grace that we're celebrating during the Lenten season, that grace of Jesus Christ, we're called to get it out to the whole world, no matter what we face, no matter the turmoil, the division, the obstacles that Satan has put before us. And St. Patrick did that. Now there are those legends about St. Patrick, you know, that he drove all the snakes out of Ireland. Those legends aren't true. But there is truth to who the individual was. There are some things we know about St. Patrick. Uh, we know that really he found his faith after going through a time of trouble. You see, he lived on a fairly wealthy estate in Britain, uh, had a wealthy family. St. Patrick was captured by Irish raiders that came across the channel, across the water, over there to Britain and took him back. And he was in captivity. And he felt that while in captivity, God called him and told him how to escape. And he was able to escape, a very daring escape, and get back to Britain. But when he got back to Britain and was safe again, then he felt that God came to him in a dream, that God called him again to, to a life of more purpose. And as he was you know, out in the fields, tending the fields, doing those activities, even as the days when he was over in Ireland under capture, and he was away from everyone, he had these experiences where he communicated to God, where he talked to God. And, and that's not something foreign. That's something we have. It's called prayer. It's called connection. It's called feeling the Holy Spirit move within us. And St. Patrick felt that because he didn't decide just to go back and live his safe life in Britain now. No, he in turn studied for years, maybe 10 to 15 years, he studied the ministry, became a missionary, and returned to the land where the people had taken him captive, back to Ireland. And he went there, and, and historically, at times we get this messed up, it's been told that he introduced Christianity to Ireland. That's not actually true. There were Christians there, though they were very small in number. And he was going to be the missionary to those Christians, but he ended up being the missionary to far more. Because most of the people that lived in Ireland at that time were still of a pagan faith that really was all about nature and worshiping the deities of nature and the things around them. And Often in Christianity, when Christians would go to places to be missionaries, they would tell the people they had to drop their ways, and they would try to convert them and change them. They'd call them heretics if they believed in something else. St. Patrick took a different approach. He took the bold love of Jesus with him, and instead, he incorporated those traditions into the Christian way of doing things. It was okay to have some of those traditions as long as you still believed in Jesus Christ. And we can see that reflected in many of the, the beliefs that we have around St. Patrick and those beliefs that come forth in the traditions of the church today. You know, we can either force it unto people and they not accept it, or we can take the truth with bold love, like St. Patrick did. He was bold. He didn't have to go away from being safe again. 
He didn't have to study the ministry for all those years. He didn't have to go through that trouble and then risk his life once again by returning to a place that was not so safe, a place of filled with uncertainty, but he did it because he believed the Lord called him to a higher purpose, and he did it because he lived into the way of the Holy Spirit. Now today, I'm not telling you you need to get on a boat and go across the ocean to be a missionary, though some are called to do that. I'm telling you, though, that we are all called to be bold like St. Patrick, that we are called to do the work of the Lord. Sometimes that's the smallest thing, and we don't realize it. Sometimes it's bigger and bolder things like St. Patrick did. But we are called to be bold in our faith. That doesn't mean we force our beliefs upon people. That doesn't mean we call them out. But it means we share the bold love and grace which is found in Jesus Christ. So in this day when we celebrate St. Patrick, and really we celebrate a lot of those legends, not all, so much all that truth, but on this day, let us celebrate and remember what God did through not just St. Patrick, but so many of the faithful throughout the generations. And let's celebrate what he can do through us if we are bold in our faith. Let us pray. Father God, be with us. Help us to be bold in our faith today, tomorrow, and always. Help us to be led by the Spirit to find ways to be missionaries here in our own communities, to reach out to those in need, to talk to those that maybe we once before would have walked away from, to reach out and, and share the message of Jesus and his grace, and to look upon people with understanding and with love. Oh God, you are always with us, just as you were with St. Patrick. We know you will guide us to better things and Father, as we continue on this Lenten journey, we just pray that we are bold for you. In the name of Jesus, amen. I hope you all have a wonderful St. Patrick's Day, a wonderful week, and I'll see you again on Friday for our announcement time and inspiration together. And you can join us this evening at 6 o'clock in the sanctuary or online uh, for our midweek Lenten services. And tonight's theme is all about revival of the soul. May God bless you all.